We are building terrariums today and we already went to the huge plant store and picked out our jars and the flowers that go in them. Well, he has plants, I have cacti. I have flowers. You have also flowers? Uh, yeah, I think they're flowers. You have a flowery plant, the orange one. Mm -hmm. And now we're just in this nature area to find other things that we want to put in our jars. Pull my finger, please. Little acorns. <laughs> pull my finger. Well, come on, you didn't fulfill on what you're supposed to do when you make that joke. Here, there's a bunch of acorns yeah. here on the ground. Do you want any acorns? I don't know exactly what I'm looking we'll for. Get, we'll get, we'll get some, more, some twigs, get some nice rocks, maybe some shells. Um, yeah, about shells. Anything pretty about going that. To the sand pit. And we can get some sand. Um, so that's what we're doing now. Watch out, Corona. Um, it's beautiful out here, though. We came just at the right time of evening. Look at this way. That's so nice. Let's see what we can find, babe. And while the machine was running, I can take the broom out and get all the shit. Wait, your thumb and your index finger should be. Ooh. Wow. Babe, it looks like Tiger Broad. Yeah, there's this, they're only during a certain season to so go into the mountains to hunt them. And once you see one, you start seeing a lot more. Because, I don't know, they're hard to spot at first. They're not bright red anyway. So what on the trees? I think that's cool. In Nevada, they take rocks and they stack them all up, like on the sides of the roads and stuff. Right? It's not very much longer. Well, you can also... to start to do the project here in the backyard so we're actually running out of light but we have a nice fire here and we've got some brewskis and so this one is Dante's he's putting the soil in it now and I haven't started on mine but I don't think I'll be able to film the rest in this lighting so I'll try to get some pictures and some videos but I might have to film the finished product tomorrow.
spilled all over the floor. So we're on our way to the store now for another uh, glass container for my terrarium. And I'm gonna try it again. Okay, so I have everything outside again, ready to make my terrarium for the second time. This is take two. This is um, terrarium trials take two. Terrarium trials take two. Try saying that ten times fast. Terrarium trials take two. Terrarium trials take two. Terrarium trials take two. So I'm actually doing it a bit different because yesterday I didn't have room for all of my plants. So now I'm gonna use two different ones. I'm gonna make it again in this, but I was squeezing it really tight in there yesterday. So I think it was really heavy and um, I packed it pretty tight. So I think that's why the glass broke as well. Um, and not all of my plants fit in there when I was finished. So I got a second one today and I'm gonna make two. Huh? Dante felt really bad yesterday because he's the reason that my um, terrarium shattered. I was trying to set it down on um, a small table that sits next to the recliner in the reading corner. And um, there was something there already on the table. It was like a little cardboard box filled with yarn. And that is actually what cracked the glass. Like I went to set it down on the table as he was moving it away and the corner of the box like hit the bottom or I don't know at what part of the glass it hit, but it was like, I was about to literally set it down to like step back and really look at it because we were making it here in the backyard. And like I said on the video, it was too dark that I couldn't even properly see right. So I went in, you know, to go inspect it and I'm looking at it like this and I'm about to set it down so that I can step back and look at it from all angles. And it just like at the end, <laughs> okay, in just this moment, it just shattered. And of course there's just rocks and cacti and everything just like on the floor and like on the table with the magazines and everything. And I'm just holding it and this broken part is all I have in my hands and I'm just holding it like this. And I just look down and I just drop the rest of the piece and walk away. Okay, cool. Just drop. Bye. Well, he felt really bad. He was just like immediately like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I just didn't say anything. I was devastated. It was really a tragedy. But, um, so I actually am doing things differently this time because like I said yesterday I think half of the reason that it burst was because there was pressure on the glass because I really <laughs> stuffed it full of rocks and plants and I actually had to like because this hole is so low to yeah I can't really stack things or layer things very high but I packed it down really hard and the I think part of the reason was because the first layer that I put down was rock, but that's what they said you're supposed to do for drainage. Um, but I think that the heavy rocks pressing against the bottom of the glass is what made it so um, delicate. So this time I'm putting down sand, just a little bit of sand first, and then some rocks. So now I'm going in with my rocks. And I should probably do my other one at the same time. Okay, now I have some rocks. I don't know how many to put, and I want to have some left over for my other terrarium. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I really hope all my plants survived. I know cacti can be pretty hardy, but they've been through a lot. 
Okay, that's really not enough rocks to provide proper drainage. Just regular plant terrarium rocks that we bought at the store. We only got one bag, and Dante used it for his, and I used it, obviously, the rest for mine. So I think I'm gonna have to gather some stones in the backyard, because it does need a little bit more. Okay, I go. Make some filler rocks. That's perfect. It's really nice. I actually really like the light color. Okay. So we are trucking along very nicely here. Okay, so now is when you add the charcoal. This charcoal, activated charcoal, um, I think it's for nutrients and it's also like a sort of filter, like charcoal. Um, yeah, it's a natural like uh, filter cleaner. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing this tiny, tiny, tiny little shell. It was like stuck in a spider's web on the wall. It's a tiny, tiny uh, snail shell. You can't see it. Anyway, trust me, it's tiny. Well, anyway, the charcoal goes in now. And it tells me on the back how big the terrarium is, how many spoonfuls I need. I should only need one. To one and a half for each because they're both fairly small for as far as terrariums go um so i'm just gonna guess put some in the lid here because I'm putting the aloe in here. And aloe can survive in a dry climate. It takes more water than the cacti, so. For this layer, I think I'm gonna do mostly sand. Maybe I'll mix it a little bit with some soil. So it's like a mixture of both because the cacti don't need as moist of a climate and the dirt holds more, more moisture than sand does. And I want it to be sort of more like a desert. There's two different types of terrariums that you can build. Closed and open. And basically if you have a closed terrarium and you have a lid on it, it can be its own ecosystem. It depends what plants you have in there because if they need like regular watering, you might have to open the lid and water it occasionally. But mostly what they're supposed to do is um, recycle their own water. So it will like condense inside the glass when the sun hits it and um, provide moisture for the plants. And then I guess go back into the soil and 
Yeah, just do the water cycle, you know, that we learned in school. So, I think that's pretty neat. because I wasn't quite seeing what I wanted and we get to like right near the cashiers and we see a whole another section that we didn't see before with like way more cacti and like little tiny things specifically to fit inside terrarium so we were kind of kicking ourselves like oh we went through the whole store and we spent like two hours in the store trying to decide times in the in the right in the right arrangement. I think they look like magic beans. Guys, they looked a lot better yesterday before they crashed onto the floor. Um, but they're like these, I've never seen these before ever. I don't know if they're a type of cactus or succulent, but they're like these magic, they look like brains or beans or something. And I'm gonna try and stick like a few of these in all around, so. I need to make sure to be spreading these out because once I get one or two plants in there, I already can't really reach around it. That's why on the videos we watched before when we were getting ready to make these, a lot of people were using like telescopic tools because you have to feed from above or um, spoons to like reach inside of these hard to reach places. Yesterday I had this snail shell that I had in my terrarium and somehow when it broke I lost it. I think it's in the vacuum. So I was just asking Dante where do I you know where do I get another snail shell? <laughs> he says come look in the barbecue. Apparently we're having escargot.
both of mine. This is my first terrarium, of which I am very, very proud. Look at this cute guy. There's my buttons, my brains. Oh, it's so nice. I love it, but I am a realist and I'm just wondering how many of these plants are going to live. So I'm not getting my hopes entirely up yet, but I'm really happy with this one. It's so cute. And the other one, Dante, what is the charcoal for? For filtering toxins. Toxins? So here's my second one. It's also very cute. I don't know, again, I don't know if the aloe will survive. It was not in um, firm soil or water all night. But actually this one looks really cute as well. And I'm, I stuck these in here because it was room, but they were like the, the least healthy looking of all of the button brains. So I don't know if they will survive, but I'm hoping they will because they're really neat. So there you have it. I added like a stick in there, this curly stick just for aesthetic. And I quite like it. Look at my shell. dry and they need a more arid climate so that's why I went with the open one but Dante's he actually has two now that are closed which I think is really cool it's been really cool to watch them the one that he has will grow like a mushroom on it every once in a while and the mushroom will you can see it like starting to take root on the side and then it comes up and blooms and it's there for like a day and then it might like shrivel and then it might be a couple weeks without anything but it's really cool to watch Closed terrariums are probably a really good option for people who want like low maintenance plants or it could be really versatile like you could have a terrarium that you water and then like if you go on vacation you could have a stopper for it so that like if you're on vacation for two weeks it waters itself. It would be really cool to just have like a bunch of terrariums in your house. Now there's like four that you have that are inside Dante. There's gonna be like terrarium central in there. <laughs> we don't really know where we're gonna put them all. <laughs> Time will really tell in a week or two if they're all shriveled up and dead, um, if this terrarium thing worked out. It can be kind of a process, I think, um, especially because we did have to research a little bit before we bought the stuff, but it was a really fun project. And uh, yeah, oh my gosh, look at it. It looks so nice when it's clean. Okay, so I'm gonna go try and figure out where I'm gonna put these, and that's the end of it. That's all I have time for today, so I hope you enjoyed this video.